These soldiers find ice in the desert where temperatures reach 130 degrees Fahrenheit. As far as the eye can see, the hills and villages look like they are in a freezer with hundreds of villagers frozen into ice sculptures that break their hands with the slightest touch. This anomaly occurs without a hint of warning from start to finish. At the beginning of the movie, a series of catastrophic events on a worldwide scale takes place. Rising global temperatures, altered ocean currents, and the loss of polar ice are just a few of the effects of climate change. In the year 2019, numerous people are being affected by unusually severe weather, which results in the wiping out of entire cities and fatal casualties. The East River eats away the majority of Lower Manhattan. In just one day, a heat wave kills almost 2 million people in Madrid. Cities and countries all across the world disappear in an instant. Ultimately, it becomes clear that no single nation has the resources to handle this problem on a global scale. As a result, governments worldwide collaborate to find a solution. Scientists from 17 countries, led by the US and China, work day and night to make Dutch Boy a climate-controlling system using thousands of satellites to keep the world's climate stable. Preventative controls are to be sent from these satellites to various locations across the world. In space, scientists will keep an eye on this operation. After the successful launch, the atmosphere across the world changes immediately. Meanwhile, Chief Architect Jake Lawson arrives in Washington, D.C. The guard on duty greets him with amazement on his face. Jake is the one who came up with the idea for the Dutch boy, and everyone respects and admires him for his brilliant creation. He is also the Chief Operations Coordinator for the International Climate Space Station and is invited by Senator Thomas Cross for a press conference. But then, Jake is called out by Senator Cross for being an hour late. Jake's decision to launch Dutch Boy without first receiving the senator's approval has particularly engaged him and the rest of the officials. The U.S. government plans to take full control of the Dutch Boy project, even though it is a program that is strongly supported by different countries. Jake does not think that anyone should have exclusive rights to the Dutch Boy and he warns the senator of making a false claim about owning his invention. He also talks about how over 600 scientists and engineers from various countries work together to create the Dutch boy in the space station. Instead of taking the offer and making a strong case for his side, Jake argues with the senators and tries to convince them to reconsider his proposal. Max, Jake's brother, tries to silence him but fails. Max already knows the official's plan to fire Jake, and he breaks the bad news to his brother after the meeting. Three years later, a group of soldiers is making their way through the scorching desert of Afghanistan when they come across a village coated in ice and snow. Then, U.S. officers extend their investigation to cover the entire village. They conclude that most of the people in the village are already dead. Meanwhile, Max, now an assistant secretary of state, runs into Sarah Wilson, his fiancée, who is currently working as a secret service agent for the United States. But he suddenly has to leave Sarah and head to the White House for a top-secret meeting ordered by the President of the United States. One of the thermospheric satellites is experiencing a malfunction in Afghanistan, and the situation there is being reported promptly to the United States government. After learning of the happenings, President Andrew Palma holds a meeting of his cabinet. As per Deckham, the U.S. Secretary of State, several senators proposed temporarily shutting off the satellites in Central Asia to investigate the Afghan satellite's malfunction. However, as to the nation that takes part in building the Dutch boy and depends on its excellent performance, reporting the incident to them will lead to a serious global issue. So, they are discussing how to conceal the incident from the general public because the election is coming soon. But this infuriates Max, who genuinely worries about others. He points out that 300 people in the village died due to the alleged malfunction. To remedy the situation, 
Max suggests dispatching a single individual to the International Climate Space Station to do a system check and investigate the error that occurred. Jake is the only person who is beyond knowledgeable of the capability of the Dutch boy. Max is also asked to appoint his brother because he is the only one who knows the Dutch boy inside and out. Though with some doubts about the plan, Max nonetheless rushes off to see Jake. On the other hand, experts and astronauts aboard the International Space Station will have to replace the faulty Afghan satellite and determine what went wrong. In order to ensure the satellite is functioning properly, engineer Makmound Habib, an Indian astronaut, has been assigned to run a full diagnosis of the faculty Afghan satellite. However, he appears to be working on the orders of an unknown individual as he secretly stores satellite data on a hard drive and hides it in a pile of documents. Makmound walks straight to the locker room to keep the documents and the hard drive. After that, he walks into an airlock pathway. Suddenly, it malfunctions and gets trapped inside. The glass shatters and debris are being launched into space, including Macmound. The scene changes to Max, who has just arrived to Jake's house and sees his niece Hannah doing some engineering work. Jake pops out of his door to find Hannah, but to his surprise, he sees his long-lost brother. Hannah leaves Jake and Max alone and goes inside the house. Even after being laid off, Jake's passion for engineering remains strong. Max informs him that the Dutch boy is malfunctioning, but Jake is certain that this is impossible because his invention is without fault. Max mentions the incident in Afghanistan and the airlock incident in the space station where they lost engineer MacMound. Jake refuses to show that he is still concerned about the Dutch boy, but at last, he agrees to go back to the space station to investigate the source of the problem. We now see the Hong Kong headquarters of the Climate Council in China. Dutch Boy Program Supervisor Cheng Long is busy checking for the Afghanistan satellite replacement in his office. Heat index values are going through the roof. Because of this, Cheng decides to stop at the local grocery and stock up on water and eggs. As he walks back to his car, he drops the tray of eggs and notices they start frying on the ground. Suddenly, there is a rumbling sound and the gas mains begin to break and explode beneath the ground. After several pipelines have blown, triggering an earthquake that levels a large section of the city, Chang successfully makes a rush across the city. He and the other people make it to the middle of a bridge where it is cooler and look down at the ruins of their city. Meanwhile, Jake feels sad about leaving his daughter. Hannah tells a heartfelt goodbye to her father and moves in with her mother. After a three-year break, Jake is finally returning to the International Space Station to diagnose the Dutch boy. Upon his arrival, Jake expresses his amazement when the current chief scientist and station commander, Ute Fossbinder, greets and presents him to the rest of the crew. Jake's team consists of Enai Adiza, Duncan Taylor, Al Hernandez, and Ray Doucette. They are shocked by the presence of Jake. At this moment, Chang calls Max to tell him that he has been locked out of the Dutch Boy database in Hong Kong. He is convinced that they are being prevented from learning the real reason why the temperature has been increasing for no apparent reason. They know their database has been breached when even Max is also unable to log in. After that, Chang explains that the geostorm will form on Earth if the Dutch Boy suffers a total system failure, and that will destroy all life on Earth in an instant. Right after the phone call, some armed men break into Chang's office, but luckily he hides in time. His laptop is stolen, along with all the data he has on the Dutch boy's technical problem. Back in the space station, Jake is discussing with his team the type of satellite that malfunctions in Afghanistan. Instantly, Duncan identifies it as Rock and Roller or the SR-22 as his favorite satellite. It uses sonic waves to slow down the movement of molecules, which has a cooling effect. Jake gives the order to scan all satellites of that type in an attempt to find the virus that compromises the system. The following morning, Max approaches Dana, a security expert, to see what is wrong with the database. She quickly learns that someone has broken into the system and erased weather data. Meanwhile, Jake orders his team to inspect the interior of Hong Kong's satellite but the robot arm holding it goes insane 
and nearly kills everyone before collapsing. In the security footage of the incident that killed MacMound, Jake notices a panel is jamming a hard drive. Jake and Ute try to get it back, risking almost certain death because someone sabotaged Jake's spacesuit and it suddenly goes wild while they are outside. After his spacesuit fails, he almost falls into space, but he manages to grab onto a metal beam. Once back inside the station, he reveals to Ute that he has the drive but maintains it a secret from the rest of the crew out of fear that they may have been the ones who sabotaged him. Jake and Ute try to review the drive's data but fail. Jake concludes that someone does not want them to access the log data and intentionally killed MacMound. He asks Ute who has access to the video conference room and thinks that if he directly relays the message to his brother, they might also end up dead. On the other hand, Chang rushes to the United States to meet Max and tell him what he learned from the intruders. However, before Chang can reach him, an unknown man throws him into a moving vehicle. Chang passes on some information to Max concerning a project codenamed Zeus before he dies. This time, through a video conference, Jake tells Max about the day their father took them fishing. Since Max's father has never taken them fishing, Max reviews the video footage of their conversation with Dana and tells her it's an encrypted message from Jake. Max decrypts Jake's message using their late father's phone number and finds that a high-ranking government official is participating in the satellite failures. With this information, Max also explains to Dana what he learned from Chang and requests information about the Zeus project. At this moment, Ute and Jake discover the drive with the login information in the locker room. Suddenly, Doucette appears and asks them what they are looking for. With a gun pointing at them, Ute worries that Doucette is the one who sabotaged Jake. Jake immediately explains that someone tried to kill him, who also killed MacMound. Doucette is convinced and lowers his gun. He shows Jake and Ute the locker where the drive is since Doucette was present when MacMound hit it. Later on, they discover that a virus is spreading to keep International Climate Space Station employees from logging in and weaponizing Dutch Boy to attack specific cities. It has to be some higher official who has access to the mainframe, but they don't know who. Jake contacts Max again with the suspicion that the US president may be behind the attack. According to Jake, the president is using the Dutch Boy to destroy the neighboring cities. Max gets to work on acquiring the president's credentials to stop the geostorm from occurring and they need to reboot the system using the US president's kill codes. Max tells this to his fiance as he needs her to help to get to the president. As of this moment, Jake reports 200 satellite malfunctions. At this time in Tokyo, an enormous hailstorm hits, bringing down hail big enough to destroy a bus while the temperature in Brazil drops freezing the oceans and people on beaches. Afterward, a geostorm warning pops up on the screen, which means it will happen in 1 hour and 30 minutes. At the same time, Max and Sarah fly to Orlando for the Democratic National Convention, and Max hears that a massive thunderstorm is on its way. Deckham questions Max about the real reason he attends the convention. Instead of replying to his question, Max asks him for help, revealing that he suspects that President Palma has something to do with the system's failure. This time, the space station is about to begin a self-destruction process. Jake and his team initially code this protocol so that the space station will be destroyed if it ever crashes into Earth. The scientists have no choice but to abandon the station and make the risky journey home. After discovering that his teammate Duncan planted the virus in the Dutch Boy system, Jake fights him and sends him into space via a shattered window. On the other hand, Deckham, who turns out to be the traitor, tries to shoot Max. Luckily, Max manages to get away from him and makes a quick escape through the back door. He quickly tells Sarah that Deckham plans to kidnap the president. Deckham wants to kill the president and then take over the presidency. Sarah asks Max if she still needs to steal the kill codes from the president. Max says that the president is the kill code because his biometrics, retina scans, and fingerprints are already stored in him. If he dies, the geostorm will persist. Sarah distracts the other Secret Service personnel so that she can take the president without being discovered. To ensure the safety of him, Sarah provokes a gunfight, prompting the guards to escape the president from the area. 
Following this, she knocks out one of them and leads the president and Max to a waiting car. While being chased by Deckham's men, Sarah and Max explain everything to the president in the car. Sarah is driving through the city, trying to escape Rico, Deckham's bodyguard, and the rest of his goons. Right then, they hide under a bridge. Sarah then gives chase and eventually manages to push Rico into the path of the storms, where a lightning bolt strikes his car and kills him. In the space station, after Max successfully obtains the president's credentials, the whole crew boards a shuttle to return to Earth, except for Jake and Ute. With Max, Sarah, and the president on the move, Deckham orders one of his men to fire an RPG at them. However, they are not in the vehicle when it explodes. After knocking out the goon, Max and Sarah arrest Deckham until the police arrive. Asked why he did all this, Deckham explains that he intends to use Dutch Boy to cause a natural disaster that will put the United States on top of the globe with himself as the president. Before Deckham is taken into custody, Max punches him in the face. As the virus begins to take full control of the station, the safety mechanisms begin to activate. The satellites then go wild, unleashing a tsunami on Dubai and inflicting widespread destruction. The president is taken to mission control after the arrest of Deckham. Max and Sarah then have him send the kill codes. During their conversation, Jake informs Max that the kill codes can halt the geostorm, not the self-destruct process. Despite Max's best efforts to save Jake's life, Jake makes preparations for his own death. The two brothers express their love for each other. Jake is in a hurry to give the kill codes to the main computer, and Ute stays behind to assist him. They successfully reboot the system, with only a few seconds remaining for the geostorm to come. Within seconds, all natural disasters in the world die down, and the world is finally saved. Mission Control Headquarters is in high spirits. However, Jake and Ute are currently trapped inside the self-destructing space station. They escape the crumbling space station in a nearby pod located within an obsolete satellite that launches into space without a destination. In the aftermath of the station's destruction, everyone assumes that Jake is dead. Watching this at home, Hannah begins to cry. Following this, Max is informed by a nearby spacecraft's camera that the pod is sending out a distress signal. Hernandez's shuttle comes to a stop and catches the pod, saving Ute and Jake. Seeing this, Max and the others happily cry and cheer. Also, the flooding in Dubai is starting to go down while the huge tornadoes in India have been wiped out, killing a lot of people. However, everyone is grateful for the chance of a new beginning. After Jake and Ute safely return to Earth, Max and Sarah express their relief. As Jake approaches, everyone, including the president, greets him warmly. Max's fiancée, Sarah, formally presents herself to Jake and is welcomed into the Lawson family. Six months later, Jake returns to his former position as the chief architect of a new Dutch boy system. It is seen that he, Max, and Hannah try fishing for the first time because they never did it as kids.